Hey guys, Scott here again um, with a new beer dissection video with you. Um, what we have uh, today is kind of a seasonal beer that Sierra Nevada pulls that, puts out every year. I believe it's seasonal. I don't think they're making this all year round right now. Um, so it's called Celebration Fresh Hop IPA. Uh, this one was packaged on uh, October 5th. So you know, uh, not quite two months old, which is, was, isn't too bad. Um, you know, some of these hop, highly hop beers, you'd like to have them in a month or so, especially if they're like New England IPAs or American IPAs. But I think a big commercial example, I, I think a couple of months or just under a couple of months is fine. Um, you know, this is coming in around 6.8% alcohol, about 65 international bitterness units. Uh, for those of you, I try to you know educate you as we go along. For those of you who are not as as familiar with that, but remember IBUs are international bitterness units. So it's sixty five. That's up there around like a typical IPA. Um, you know anywhere they you know they could be you know forty to seventy, then sixty to ninety, depending on if it's double you know IPA or a regular IPA. But to kind of compare it to say your German Pilsner, roughly you know thirty five forty IBUs. Um, you know, it's using a lot of Pacific Northwest hops. Uh, I believe it's uh, Chinook, Centennial, Cascade, which will probably give you, you know, classically with those hops, they'll give you that piney, resiny, a uh, little citrus from the Cascade hop, like a grapefruit. Um, in the Willamette Valley in uh, Oregon and, and the Yakima Valley in, in Washington is our big uh, hop producing uh, locations here in the United States, as well as a small nook in Idaho that is pretty big, as well as, you know, we have hop uh, plants here on Long Island, but the big producers, I, I think we're, I forget the statistics, but we're almost right there with Germany uh, as far as hop production. Um, so again, Sierra Nevada Celebration Fresh Hop IPA. You can find it pretty readily in, in most stores. I think I even had this picked up at a local grocery store uh, here um, last week or so. So, uh, and actually as I'm looking at it, it says family owned and operated. <laughs> okay, if that means anything to you. But Sierra Nevada makes a lot of class, Imperial Stout Narwhal, uh, they make uh, regular pale ale. I probably do a video. Their classic pale ale, which uses uh, Cascade hops, but Sierra Nevada, you'll see a lot of their their beers out there um, because IPAs are so popular. You're seeing so some people like to age this beer uh, and store it around. I, you know, I'm never a big fan for my aging video, and I, I think a lot of people who are in the business uh, agree. You know, one of the first things you start losing with aging in beer, which I brought up in that video, is a lot of the hop flavor um, and aroma uh, that you'll get in beer. So I, I, I particularly would like to try to drink this as fresh as you, as you can. But I know some people like to kind of store. I think I've actually seen some videos of, of people do similar things to what I'm doing right now. And they've, they've had it sitting around for you know a year or two. Um, but I would try to drink this as fresh as you can. Um, Okay, so uh, let's crack this thing open. Okay, I'm using my, uh, you know, between my smaller, my oversized snifter, you know, you know, tulips glass that I, you see me use commonly, and then I have that taller uh, tulip glass stem tulip. I just think it does a lot more for the beer. I always talk a little bit about glassware when I'm bringing these styles up because you've seen my Leslie Brewing Company uh, uh, shaker pints. And just to bring it up, if you haven't seen some of my other videos, the Shaker Pine is, is, doesn't do much for the beer. Uh, I like them because I, you know, kind of have my name on there. They're kind of fun to have around, but they don't do too much. So, you know, something with, you know, that kind of supports the head uh, shape that kind of just draws the hop aromas up towards the top of the glass. So you can kind of appreciate that, I think is ideal. All right, so Sierra Nevada Celebration Fresh Hop IPA. Let's crack this open. Um, if you guys ever want, if you've never had this before, I'll try to go through it with you. Okay, so let me I'm kind of pouring it off camera here. Okay, um, so immediately what we see is we got a nice white head, kind of crystal clear. If you can't make it out in the picture on on uh, on the camera. 
but kind of a dark gold um, color, perfectly clear. There's really no haze at all to that. Uh, we got a nice head on there, and that looks like it's going to stay pretty solid white to beige head. Um, let's take a whiff of it. Oh, yeah, you know, you definitely get a little pine, um, kind of a subtle grapefruit, you know, probably coming from the Cascade hops. If you get the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, that uses exclusively Cascade hops. It's a classic beer. I'm going to probably do a video on that because that really was one of the, with Anchor Liberty and Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, uh, one of the early first craft beers brewed beginning in the early 1980s. So I have a lot of history on that one to discuss with you. Um, but yeah, definitely a little citrus, a little perfumey, but definitely you get a little bit of kind of a, a subtle pine to it, probably from the Chinook or the um, Centennial hops. You know, you get a little bit of the... Um, you know, white bread, malt, light toast, you know, as you can see there. Um, I don't have the entire grist for this. You know, they may use a little bit of crystal malt. So let's take a sip of it. Oh, yeah, you get, first thing you get hit with is some of the bitterness. Even though it usually takes a little bit, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I kind of, feel it hitting my tongue. Remember with the bitterness, you, you, especially with these hoppy beers, you take it in, you swallow, let it sit there for a little bit. But at 65 IBUs, it's up there like your normal IPAs um, that you'd see com you know, commercially available. But very fresh, um, you know, but you, you still get a little bit of that grapefruit uh, on the palate, pithy. You know, it has, it has a little bit of a, there's a slight astringency to it, um, kind of a medium mouth feel. Um, and as it kind of lingers in my mouth here, you know, I, I kind of get a little bit more of a grapefruit. I get a little more citrus and, and pithy grapefruit, slightly bitterness from that more than kind of the, the resiny piney, um, aspect, but you definitely get a little bit of a hit of, yeah, you definitely get, you know, it smells a little bit like Christmas. I guess that's why, you know, this kind of comes out in December, a lot of times in November, uh, with the piney uh, aspect of this. Um, yeah, you know, kind of like to to toast malt, um, bread crust, you know, maybe a little graham cracker in there um, as far as the malt is concerned. Um, but you definitely know, if you were, had your eyes closed on this, that you're definitely getting that hot bitterness. So if you're kind of a devout IPA drinker, you know, you, you're not going to get that um, fruity New England IPA hazy, you know, blast. So if you're looking for grapefruit juice, orange juice, mango um, type of flavors, you're not going to get that in this. This is kind of more of a classic, you almost from just smelling it when you study beer and, you, and you're learning about all the different hop varieties or if you're a home brewer and you've brewed with um, you know, Columbus Chinook or Cascade hops, you know you're in the Pacific Northwest. You know, like you just know that's where those hops are coming from um, versus, say, a German Noble hop, which will have more, um, you know, peppery, minty, you know, uh, floral, perfumey type of hop. This kind of hits you with a little pine, a little grapefruit, a little citrus, but not to the overwhelming if you were drinking, say, a, a classic New England IPA or hazy IPA or juicy IPA, whatever you want to call them these days. So, but it makes sense because Sierra Nevada is in, in, in the Pacific Northwest. But I would say this falls a little bit more into a classic West Coast IPA. Um, it is, again, brewed a lot of times at the holiday time. Um, you will get that, you know, pronounced bitterness here on the, on the palate. Um, you know, something, you know, it has enough bitterness and stuff, you know, like cheddar cheese, you know, cheese pairing would be good. IPAs are classic for blue cheese. Um, so, you know, your fatty uh, cheeses. I would keep this away from your mozzarella, your, um, 
yeah, ricotta and, and, and things like that cheeses. But, um, you know, definitely enough bitterness to kind of handle some fatty uh, food, maybe even some gamey meats around the holidays and, and dishes like that to try to um, cleanse your palate a little bit. Uh, this would overpower probably a little bit of some of your delicate seafood and, and, and shellfish and things like that. Um, but again, as I've always given you recommendations, throw them out the window if you drink what you want to drink. Like some wine drinkers, you know, they say, oh, use white wine for fish or red wine for beef. I kind of give you some of the traditional pairings or just things I've had experience. Um, but drink what you want to drink. Uh, but, you know, so celebration, fresh hop. IPA, um, I think aligns a little more with the West Coast IPA versus, again, your New England IPAs or your American IPAs, which are more fruity. These are more piney, resiny, um, a little grapefruit citrus in there, but definitely pronounced bitterness uh, like that uh, more than, remember, remember with the West Coast IPAs, you're going to have a lot more bitterness than your New England IPA. New England IPA is going to be heavily with the flavor of the hops and the aroma and usually tends towards that citrus, you know, pineapple, um, uh, grapefruit. This has some grapefruit, but you know, this will have a little piney, sometimes even resiny, which is, you know, they say like marijuana kind of, you know, smell, but, uh, so, but again, a, definitely a solid. And this beer has been around for a while. Like it does come out every year. Um, I think it's something worth trying. If you never tried it, at least maybe this video gives you a little background about it. Um, so again, 6.8%, uh, contrary to what you read, I wouldn't recommend holding on to it for very long. Uh, get it. I would, I would just enjoy it and drink it as, as much as, as, as quickly as you can. Um, so again, guys, hopefully that was informative and, uh, have a great day till next time. Take care.